What's going on you gamers? Today I'm going to be going over my thoughts on The Ascent, the brand new action role playing game that's just hit Game Pass. So if you want to know the good, the bad and the ugly, then stay tuned, that's coming up next. Welcome back all you guys and girls, as always for all things gaming, for all things Xbox, then why not hit that subscribe and bell icon. But for today I'm here to give you my thoughts on The Ascent and how I got on in it in roughly my first 12 hours of gameplay. The Ascent itself is set in a very cyberpunk style world, but it's not our world, instead it's a planet called Velez. You play as a worker for The Ascent Group, who after its collapse has to fend for himself and make ends meet as what seems like everyone tries to fill the void that has been left by the corporation's collapse. You're going to need some cool moves, funky looking armour and a hell of a lot of guns if you're going to survive. You're definitely in luck. Now jumping in at the start, I've got to say my skills were anything but great, it's been a long time since I've played a game such as this and a kind of isometric shooter or action role playing game was very different to what I was used to at the moment. As such, I was out of practice and definitely found myself falling over a few times. In general, I'm sure it will be likened to things like Diablo 3 very often. But as I got to grips with the controls and progressed my character, it felt a lot more like the old classic Smash TV, or should I say a reinvented Smash TV with a lot of more RPG elements. You do adapt to the game fast and I found myself constantly moving and shooting and throwing out the roll or dodge move at the right time was absolutely essential. The game itself is far from easy. It's not on the level of Dark Souls by any means, but as far as I could tell there was only one standard difficulty setting, so they had to get things right. The game is definitely playable by all levels of gamers, but obviously it's not too easy, and honestly, with this I think they did a great job. The game is anywhere from moderately difficult when facing enemies or missions of your own level, all the way up to just straight unforgiving if you're trying to do quests or things that are way above your means. The scaling definitely seems spot on for me, but one thing to note if you jump into someone else's game who is doing content way above yourself and you're punching above your weight, you will be at whatever level you are, meaning there's a good chance that you're going to get hit ridiculously hard and fall over a lot. Now one of the biggest tips I would give at the start of the game is make sure you invest some of your skill points into vital signs as you level up. This will raise your health and make the game a lot more viable. Other than that, if you're struggling, like I said, definitely some well placed dodges or by using the cover mechanics where you can shoot over them using the left trigger will definitely come into play and will help with your survivability no end. In general, the game is very much about making sure you are strong enough to survive the content and encounters and as you kill enemies they will drop items and that much needed health as well. Now, The main aspect of the game in my opinion and where all the fun tends to come from is in the frantic gunplay and skills you use in order to make your way through the waves of enemies. You really can adjust your character build to suit your means. If you're trying to make an out and out walking tank, you very well can. Grab some defensive mods and armour and chuck everything into health. From what I've seen you can also get a kind of bubble shield later on where you're walking and it stays with you, it looks absolutely awesome and I'm sure it is as defensive as they come. However, if your motto is offence is the best defence, then you'll probably change things up entirely, chuck your skill points into your crit, grab a hard hitting gun, fast firing and just make your way through that way. While you're there, also make sure your augments help the build you want as well. That's another thing that I really like about this game. As well as being able to upgrade the varied weapons in the game, you can also augment your body, meaning you could have a few passives or skills at one time. And it's also a little more in depth than you first think, as the augments are linked to where you've placed your skill points. For example, the more you invest in Motorix, the greater the damage of your Hydraulic Slam move. I really like this aspect, as it can make for some really diverse builds and if you're playing with your friends or people online, there's a very big chance that you're going to be completely different and have a completely different setup to them. For example, I was playing with a friend and having a lot of success using an SMG for medium encounters, and whenever lots of enemies grouped up, I was clearing them out by rolling into them and using my hydraulic slam as a kind of makeshift dragon punch. He however had a completely different approach, he chucked loads into health and was running around with a shotgun, one shotting enemies like he was John Wick. I'm thinking I'm back! And the mod he had on really really complimented this, as when he hit them as they were about to die, they were then going to explode in an area effect, nuking enemies in the vicinity. 
Honestly, if run and gun fun and creating a character is your type of thing, this game has definitely got a lot going for it. Also, another thing that it's got going for it, that ever since Cyberpunk 2077 come out, I've appreciated this a whole bunch more, and that's the fact that you can reset your skill points. If you've completely made a build that you don't like or you want to adapt it or change it in some way, it's not a problem. It may cost a pretty penny, but honestly you can change them any time. This is an absolute blessing and it means that you can't really make any big mistakes, you'll just have to get the money to alter it at some point. All you've got to do is visit the grafter in Tan. This is such a blessing and honestly in games like this it means that you can adapt or have a lot of fun changing up your builds at any time you want. If you haven't got the money you're just going to have to earn it in some way. In fact the grafter and shops and pretty much all of the quests and side quests are mostly in a central hub area where you walk around and check out your local vendors to see if they have any new wares or if there's anything going on, quests you've missed or just eavesdrop on an ongoing conversation. Now one thing you will definitely need an abundance of is credits or money, but luckily just playing the game and completing quests as well as picking up gear along the way will net you a lot of this. And speaking on gear, another thing that's really nice, in fact after playing a really RNG based game this one was a pleasant surprise. If you are anyone you're playing with, picks up an item, say for example your friend finds a great weapon in a chest all the way over the other side of the map, you're going to get it chucked into your inventory. Once it's picked up, everyone they're playing with will get that straight away, as kind of an auto loot feature. I really like this, as lately my RNG luck has absolutely sucked, and this way you're definitely going to gear up, and if it's not something you like, you can always sell it once you get home and buy something more to your liking. In fact, I found that selling items is one of the best ways of making money in this game. Another nice thing is banties. They were a really nice added extra and a great way of earning extra cash. As on your quest you'll be notified if there's a bounty target in your vicinity. Make sure you kill them and then the next time you're in a bar you'll be able to speak to the bartender and grab yourself some extra cash. Now I really like this and most times the targets were just slightly above the enemy's difficulty level wise, but it added another fun thing to do in the game and something to look out for when you are questing out in those environments. Now speaking on the quests, they were from what I played very similar in style to most RPG type affairs but often seem unique enough to not be completely boring. They weren't all go here, gather that and bring that back for me type of quests, although one of the early quests I did was exactly that, and in fact it was called Balls Deep. And you were given a task of killing vermin type creatures, and then you had to bring back a certain amount of feral testicles back to your quest giver. What he wanted them for, I don't really dare to ask, but a whole bunch of shooting later, and he was definitely the proud recipient of 12 nuts. Now to me this game has really nice graphics, very addictive gameplay in the action sequences and absolutely great build mechanics for your character, it's definitely just a whole bunch of fun to play. However there are always a few negatives and for myself I found the main one to be whenever I tried to play multiplayer above 3, 4 seemed to be very very hard to make work. For some reason it always seemed to kick one of us back to the loading screen, or just completely stutter, freeze and then make it so that we had to dashboard ourselves. 2 was perfectly fine at all times, 3 was sometimes, 4 was just a no go when I played on day 1. Now I'm really hoping this is just first day jitters, as when I did play with several people I found this is where the game really shined most, just absolute chaotic fun, where you make the best character you can and play with others who have completely different builds and you just go to town wrecking things. There's nothing quite like watching a cutscene with mini bosses smashing through a wall with hammers bigger than your character's bodies only for you to knock them out with one of your skills a few moments later. So for me I'm really hoping the connections get sorted, as like I said this seemed to be the highlight of the game for me, but there's definitely time to do that as I was playing exactly as the game was released. Now other than this, the only real issue I found was the map. I didn't particularly like the map layer as much as a lot of other games, after a while you definitely learn to adapt to it. As with most games you're going to want to make sure you highlight the quest you're after and then head towards the marker, which in this case was a green arrow, I believe you can also hold up on the d-pad. At first I often found myself getting very lost, but after a while you realise if the arrow starts flipping around you've probably missed an elevator somewhere. So just look around and then you'll have to go up a level or go down a level to continue where you want to go. The Ascent tends to do a lot more right than it does wrong. From what I've played so far The Ascent is a really solid game. I've not heard much about Endgame so it leads me to believe it may well be a playthrough and then just build up your character at the end type of game. So it may well not be the longest. 
but honestly, all in all, so far I'd highly recommend this game. If you like creating characters with crazy or overpowered builds, if you like manic fun where you're constantly shooting and in the mix of things, this is definitely one to look out for. And like I said earlier, single player seems really, really solid. However, it definitely tends to shine in my eyes in multiplayer. So if you've got a few friends with Game Pass or you've bought this game already, the fun will definitely multiply and you'll lose yourself in the chaos for a while. And honestly, nowadays for a game, sometimes just losing yourself in a bit of hectic fun is pretty much all we can ask for. As always, guys and girls, for all things gaming, for all things Xbox, take care. I'll see you on the next day.